I want to take a moment today to answer a question I'm getting a lot right now because of a popular video on Instagram that seems to be making the rounds. And it is a video of a Smith & Wesson 500 having a barrel separation at the range, or a kaboom as a lot of people like to call it. Well, let's take a look at that video really quickly here and see what, well, actually, let's uh, take a look at it from over here on this side, because if I look at it from that side, people are going to panic and wet themselves because, you know, the superimposed uh, picture of a gun that isn't actually here might be pointing at me, and they're going to be concerned for my safety and theirs, and they're going to uh, piss their panties, and I'm going to point out to them that they're an, in an idiot and a ninny, so let's just do it from this side. As you can see, someone's shooting a Smith & Wesson 500 here. It looks like it's probably a rental gun at the range, and the barrel blows off the thing. Well, that's, like I said, like we like to call a kaboom. And people are asking me, what causes kabooms in revolvers, and how can we prevent them? Well, I have always found that if you have a kaboom in any gun, especially a revolver, there's two main reasons why it happens. Now, they're extremely rare especially if you're shooting your own guns, but they're extremely rare. But when they do happen, I would say 95 to 98% of the time, they're because of two different things. Now, the first thing that they're because of is overloaded rounds. There are a bunch of, you know, workbench commandos out there, or toolbench commandos, I like to call them, who love to superload their ammo. Like, oh, this is going to be so powerful, my balls are going to grow an inch in diameter just because I built this super-powered round. And that's, I don't know why they do it, but they do it, and they tend to blow their gun up. Uh, this is usually noticeable because you see the actual cylinder explode, the top strap maybe explode on the gun. There's just way more pressure in that round than the gun can handle, period. The bullet can't go down the barrel fast enough for the pressure to be released quick enough so that it doesn't overstress the metal. Now, oddly enough, this happens more often with Rugers. And everyone knows Rugers are tanks, but it happens more often with them. I'd say in my 40 plus years of experience with revolvers, nine out of 10 times I've seen this happen, it's with a Ruger. And that's because for some reason, there's people out there, a lot of hand loaders, especially, I don't know, maybe it's the exposure to the lead or something, but they think Rugers are indestructible. Uh, they think, well, they're bigger, so they're indestructible. Well, no, that's not the reality. If you look at the reality, if you look at what the manufacturers say about both guns, Rugers and Smith & Wessons, they can handle about the same maximum pressure each. They're both about the same. Now, there are some Rugers that have longer cylinders, so therefore they can handle a more powerful round that tends to be longer because they have that longer cylinder, but it doesn't exceed the maximum pressure of either gun. It just exceeds the length for certain guns, like the Smith & Wesson. Uh, and that makes people think, well, they're indestructible, so they put these super-powered loads in these guns. And that's just not the case. Like I said, you can find a loading for anything. You can find a super powered loading for your gun, but that doesn't mean it doesn't exceed what the manufacturer says the gun can take. And we often see the results of that. So don't do that. The best way to stop that is don't overpower your rounds. Don't load your rounds like you're trying to take down a woolly mammoth just to go shoot at the range at 10 cans, uh, because it's not a smart thing to do. Uh, now, once you get beyond stupid shit like hand loading, uh, the next thing that causes the most kabooms, uh, like I say, kabooms are rare, but when they happen, the thing that I think causes them the second most is obstructed barrels. Now, you might say, well, how does your barrel get to be obstructed? Well, one common way it gets to be obstructed is a squib load. When you fire around, you know, and it's like, well, that was like half as loud as it should have been, and there was hardly any recoil. But then you go ahead and fire another round. And then there's already a bullet that didn't get out of the barrel. That's why it was so quiet. That's why it didn't kick much is because it was underpowered and the bullet didn't make it out the end of the barrel. So you fire that next round. There's nowhere for the pressure to go. The actual other bullet strikes that bullet uh, in the barrel already causing uh, problems. And, that, and then you tend to see a failure. A lot of times you can blow the cylinder out, usually pops out, doesn't explode, but usually you just see like a barrel separation. You see separation at where two things come together, like a compression fit barrel, etc. And that happens every great once in a while. Uh, the way you stop that is if you ever have a round that doesn't seem right when you fire it, don't just assume everything's okay and go on. This is very important for your own safety and those, the safety of those around you, check. There's nothing wrong with stopping and going, boy, that round didn't sound right and now I can't see down my barrel. So something's wrong here. And don't listen to people go, never look down your barrel, it's a gun. 
it's important to look down the barrel quite often, especially if you have something like a squib load. So those people are a bunch of morons, ignore them. Uh, just take safety precautions, swing the cylinder out, look down that barrel and see if there's a bullet in there. That's much safer than actually just going ahead and shooting uh, because you can't look down the barrel. But you know, it's not always a squib load that causes this either. Sometimes barrels are just partially obstructed. And you might say, well, how does a barrel get partially obstructed? And it's because you don't clean it. I've seen barrels so caked with lead and carbon residue that the hole for the bullet now is smaller than it needs to be. There's no rifling for the bullet to make contact with, and the, the actual diameter has now been shrank because the rifling has been filled in with lead or carbon or whatever. I mean, I have seen guns that were so bad you just couldn't even clean them anymore. They're just They were beyond repair now because someone had let them get so filthy. But you know, that's usually not the case, but it can happen. And it doesn't even have to be a big thing. You don't have to be able to see like, oh, the whole barrel's clogged. There can just be like a clogged spot in a barrel that can cause something like a barrel separation. If it slows the bullet down just enough that the pressure behind it builds up too high, especially over multiple firings, you can lose that barrel. You can have a kaboom or other type of kaboom. And like I said, best way to prevent that is to clean it. Uh, clean it thoroughly after every time you use your barrel. And I probably shouldn't do that. Uh, so just clean it with it. And I shouldn't do that either. That's actually worse. Let's just do like a swab. We'll just do uh, like, can like a cannon. But that, well, that actually doesn't look good either. Looks like Italian guy. But uh, let's just say clean your barrels every time you use them. Barrel maintenance is very important. These people are like, you should let your barrel get dirty enough so that you've got a certain type of harmonic in it and blah, blah, blah. That's garbage unless you're, unless you're like shooting at, a, at an event where you want your barrel to have a certain tendency every time it fires because you're not going to be able to have a clean barrel every time you fire your round. So you want it to a certain level where it's not too dirty and not too clean so it always performs the same. That that doesn't apply to self-defense shooting or range shooting. Clean your barrels because you don't want to blow up your gun. In fact, a lot of kabooms I've seen have been at competition shootings. So keep your barrels clean and don't just inspect it every now and then. Look down it, like I said, make sure it's clean. Your barrel is probably the most important part of your gun as far as maintenance is concerned, especially for range shooting. Uh, get your little endoscope. They cost like $18. I have one. I go through my barrel every time that I... Uh, shoot it every time i clean it i go give it basically give it a little colonoscopy here you know uh get a little drunk shove something up his hooter there and i look and see are there any deposits anywhere in this barrel that might cause me a problem and if there are i clean them out get some lead solvent whatever so there you have it those are the two things and it's actually kind of three things that cause most kabooms and you can avoid all of them don't overload your ammo don't fire again if you have a questionable round go off at the range. I've made that mistake before. And two, keep your barrels clean. If you do those things, chances are you personally will never have a kaboom.